Hello and welcome back to the Daily Royal, a podcast covering the daily events of all the European royal families. Today we are going to be talking about the extreme number of events from Thursday, March 25th of 2021. You guys, there isn't going to be a long intro because I'm a little rushed for time and this is probably going to be an extremely long episode. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we come in under 45 minutes. I'm going to do my hardest to make sure it is between 35 and 45 minutes. Um, Hopefully, fingers crossed, that is what we will have. So with that, we're going to jump right in and start with the Belgian royal family. Starting in Belgium, there were a couple of different events today. So King Philippe started his day with an audience. Um, Actually, he only had one event for the day, but he held an audience with the, what an awesome time to update. Sorry, the app that I use for my script is updating. Okay. Um, He met with the Minister of Employment, Vocational Training, digital transition, local authorities, and animal welfare for the Brussels capital region. Um, No details were released on that. And then Queen Mathilde visited the museum Hof van Busleden um, to explore the exhibit Children of the Renaissance, which was focused actually on um, like the children of the Habsburg family. So the Habsburgs were a royal family. Um, they for sure ruled in Spain. I don't know if they had, um, ruling anywhere else, but definitely in Spain, um, there is this famous, like, Habsburg jaw, um, which is the really elongated jaw that you'll see on old portraits of royal families, um, but this was all about, like, particularly their children, um, who grew up in this Renaissance time. Um, you know, other children. I think there were some Medici paintings as well, because the Medicis were in on that time, although not technically a royal family. They really were. Um, They were just kind of a family that ruled things, even if it was more behind the scenes. So that was those the day. Um, I love in-person events. I'm so glad (laughs) Honestly, we got a lot of in-person events today. There was very little digital, which, like, I love, um, but it makes for a really interesting day in terms of podcast recording. Um, It's just pretty, it's a pretty intense day, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm not sure how many times I can say that, but, like, it's a lot. Um, Today was intense and wonderful, but there was a lot going on. (laughs) So, and there has not been a day like this in a very long time. I don't know if there's ever been a day like this um, in my year 21, 20 months of doing this or so, whatever I'm at now, 18 months maybe. Um, Maybe not even that long. I think I'm only at 15 months, but still. Um, It's been a crazy day and it was lovely. So with that, we are just going to now go ahead and move on to the British royal family. This is where things get interesting. So in the British royal family today, there was a good bit going on. Um, So we're going to start kind of as a continuation of yesterday, um, where the Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall are on a two-day foreign visit to Greece for Greece's celebration of their bicentennial of independence. So 200 years of being independent from the Ottoman Empire. Um... I want to start by saying, so in a little bit, we'll talk about the Spanish state visit, but I called this the British 
foreign visit, and that is because a state visit is only done when a monarch goes or a head of, a head of state. Charles is obviously not the head of state. Um, he is heir to the throne, so therefore it is not considered a state visit, but rather a foreign visit. Um, on social media and like the website and stuff, I am going to classify them both as foreign visits because that will encompass kind of everything um, over, you know, looking long term. Um, like if royal tours can ever happen again and uh, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge do a royal tour, um, then that can all be considered foreign visit. So that is what I'm classifying them as, even like state visits, um, just because it's easier. Um, and that way, like long term, you guys can see kind of all the foreign visits that have taken place since we started this podcast um, in January of 2020. There was a state visit right before the lockdown. Um, does anybody know which one that was? Okay, so here are the events for today in Greece for Charles and Camilla. So this morning, they took part in a wreath-laying ceremony at the Monument of the Unknown Soldier. Following that was the, what I'm calling the actual bicentenni bicentennial ceremony, um, which consisted of a military parade followed by a fly-past. Um, here's the thing. I come from the U.S. We don't do... Normally, we don't do military parades. I think we've had some in the past couple of years because our president thought they were cool, our former president. Um, but we don't typically do military parades. So I found the idea of military parades kind of confusing and very um, North Korea, Russia-y. But now, like, doing all of this, there are a lot of military parades in the countries I talk about, and it doesn't feel so militaristic anymore. Um, of course it is, but like it doesn't feel so scary, um, dictatorship-esque anymore. It feels just a little odd, but less odd than it used to. Um, so just like a little personal note on military parades. Um, and then afterwards, Charles and Camilla vi visited with the president of Greece and his wife, um, at the presidential mansion. So yesterday they met with the prime minister and his, I'm assuming wife, when I say these things, I don't actually know. I didn't do a lot of looking into that. Um, but Greece is similar to a lot of countries in that a president serves as a head of state. Um, and then they also have a prime minister. So like Portugal has that, um, The U.S. is kind of weird in that we don't have that, and then in monarchies, um, the head of state is a king or a queen, and then there's a prime minister. So the president the president serves more of a ceremonial role, um, while the prime minister is in charge of governing, and the U.S. is kind of an anomaly in that our president is also the head of the government. Um, we don't have a separate entity that, like, a prime minister would run. We have a president, and then we have, like, the heads of each party in the Senate and the House of Representatives. So it's a little bit different um, here, but when I say president, like, this person has a lot of power and is elected, um, but they also have a prime minister underneath them. So, like, Israel has this as well, um, where their president is solely a symbol of unity, um, and their prime minister will typically be in charge. So just like little note there. Um, and then Charles and Camilla split their agenda. So Charles took part in a bilateral meeting with the prime minister of Greece and then visited Athens City Hall where he received um, an honor for the city of Athens. So an honor is going to be like an order. Um, it's a chain that he'll wear anytime he goes to Greece. Um, for an official capacity visit. Um, and then it also is, of course, ceremonious. And then um, Greece also signed on to some initiative of Charles about a green, sustainable something. I don't, I didn't do a lot of research into this. Um, and then Camilla visited an organization called Diotima. 
Diotima, I don't know how to pronounce it, um, which is a charity that works to end discrimination against women and also does a lot of um, domestic violence support. Um, and then that concludes what is now the first foreign visit of 2021 by any royal family. Um, I think it was last year, Charles and Camilla did go to Germany for like a day, um, kind of in a COVID lull, um, like a, a down part of the wave. They were able to go to Germany, um, to do something. National Day of Remembrance in Germany or something along those lines. Um, but this is the first visit of 2021, um, out of country for any royal. So they are back in Clarence House where I assume that they're probably going to have to quarantine. I know I follow, um, a photographer who was with them on the trip, uh, Chris Jackson, Chris Jackson, who works for Getty, um, or works through Getty. I don't really know. Um, and he's now in quarantine, so I don't know how long that will last, but I assume they'll be doing maybe some work from home engagements over the next couple of days, um, while they are in quarantine. And then, so to go along with this, but I didn't want to put this first, um, also in relation to the 200th anniversary of Greek independence, Queen Elizabeth sent a message to the Greek government and Greek people, uh, celebrating them on this occasion. Um, of course, she drew to the fact that Charles and Camilla were there, um, making this like a priority for um, the British government and the royal family in general. So that's what was going on on the Greece front. Um, and then we have like a completely unrelated thing that was sent out today. Um, and that is that the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge today sent a video message to an organization called Time to Change which um, they sent the message to thank employees for the work that they have been doing to end the stigma around uh, mental health. So I have always made a point of like talking about mental health on this podcast in a really um, open way because it's nothing like to me, it is nothing to be ashamed of. It is nothing that I should feel bad for. Um, having bad mental health days and like trying to draw attention to the fact that it's okay not to be okay sometimes. Um, and I do that because of like learned experience and also my education as a social worker and things like that. Um, but f years ago when I was studying and I was in school, uh, mental health was this like really taboo conversation and we didn't really have it. And um, I'm still not sure it's had a lot outside the world, but I think it is. I see it a lot on social media and stuff like that about, like, mental health and taking care of yourself. And it is becoming more mainstream, which I think is super important. Um, but organize, organizations like this, uh, Time to Change, um, really do a lot of good um, in continuing this conversation about mental health and making it not, like, this weird subject, like... Do I get weirded out sometimes if I talk about my mental health too much? Yes, I do. But that's okay. Like, it's a personal thing and it's also not something that people want to hear about all the time. But, like, I'm never going to not share if I'm having a bad mental health day or a good mental health day. Um, which today is, like, a really good mental health day. I'm not going to lie. Um, so, yeah, that is what was going on in the UK publicly. Typically at this point, I would look at the court circular. However, it is only 7.30 p.m. Um, and the court circular for me doesn't come out until 8. But I have a TV show that I like to watch at 8 p.m. So on Thursdays, we're not going to have a court circular. But like I mentioned, I am doing an episode tomorrow as well to finish up the Spanish state visit so we can talk about um, the two court circular entries in that episode. So... <laughs> With that and a whiny dog, we are going to go ahead and move on now to the Dutch royal family. In 
Netherlands today, there were an abundance of events. I needed the non-British and Spanish royal families to get the message that I needed them to be quiet today. <laughs> like I needed them not to do things <laughs> um, because I knew I was going to spend a lot of time talking about each state visit. Um, but yet every royal family, except for Denmark, decided to do something today. And some of them did more than one thing. <laughs> okay, so today King Willem Alexander visited a residential care facility where he was able to speak with employees and residents about their experiences during COVID-19. He also um, took a lot of time to like interact with the residents, which is something that hasn't really been able to be done during the pandemic. Um, but because we are now in like, I'm not going to say like the tail end completely, um, but for sure, like, in a dip at least right now, um, that I expect to be a long-term dip, um, you can interact a little bit more. So this care facility is actually starting to allow small family visitations, um, over the next couple of weeks. And of course they're doing it very safely, but my guess is most of the, um, residents are vaccinated by now. I don't know Dutch vaccination policy. Um, I know that my state just opened up our vaccinations to everybody um, and I'm scheduled for my vaccine in a week. So that's really exciting. Um, and I might talk about that when I get it. I might talk about it on the Thursday I record the day after, the day I get it. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I'm really excited and I'm glad that my state just decided to open up to everybody um, who can access their appointments. So... Um, anyway, okay, so yeah, most of these senior citizens have probably been vaccinated by now, um, and so it's a little bit safer for them to have time with their families, um, as long as their families are healthy and pass COVID screening. Um, so that was the first thing, and, like, King Willem Alexander was interacting with them. It looks like he was maybe playing a game that, like, looked kind of like badminton, but with a balloon. I don't know, it looked really fun and, like... I would love to see video of that. There might be video online um, from some journalists that follow the Dutch royal family. I'll need to check because that just looks like it would be fun. Um, so that was his first event. And then later on, he paid a digital visit um, to a women's prison in Her uh, Terpel. No idea. Um, so he was able to learn about the prison's experience during the pandemic. Um, so he spoke to both staff and detainees alike about their experiences. Um, and so in prisons, um, and this is more for like countries that treat their prisoners with dignity, which is not ours. Um, like no shame, I, a lot of shame in saying that because it's embarrassing how poorly we treat um, people in prisons, but, um, they have been, of course, taking great care to make sure that the prisons are clean and that COVID isn't spreading rampant in prison communities, um, as much as possible. I don't think that it's ever, um, you know, the Netherlands, just like any other European country, is not a utopia. They're not perfect. Um, they do a lot more right than wrong, um, but there are a lot of challenges in the Netherlands right now and, and everywhere, but they do treat their prisoners with dignity and respect, which is something. Um, and so they are, of course, taking care to make sure that they're clean and that the quality of life is not so terribly bad. Um, however, of course, like, things have had to stall visits with family um, children, parent visits are of course not really happening right now. Um, although I think they're also in works to make those return as well, or to allow those to return as well, which is wonderful. Um, especially in a women's prison, like that's super, um, gender stereotyping, but I'm going to go on like a small personal tangent that we don't have time for, but I'm doing it anyway because this is really important. I did an internship 
in children's services, which is, um, you know, the agencies in charge of protecting children. And very early on, did I realize that nothing was as black and white as my ch- um, early adulthood brain thought. Um, parents who got their children taken away didn't hate their children, which is always the way I saw it. They loved their children, um, but a lot of them loved drugs or something else more and didn't have the skills necessary to take care of their children, which I know still sounds really bad, but like mothers typically love their children. Typically. Um, There are some anomalies and I've met some anomalies, but for the most part, they love their children and um, being separated, whether they're in jail or something else is really challenging on them. Um, So in a women's prison, you know, I hope that they're able to resume family coordinated activities again, because that's really important, especially if you're planning on being released from jail, um, to have a relationship that still exists with your children is crucial. Um, so I just wanted to say that. Um, but anyway, so that was the second event for King Willem Alexander. And then also today, Queen Maxima took part in a event with credits spelled Q-R-E-D-I-T-S, um, which is a microfinance company um, in the Netherlands helping Dutch entrepreneurs start their small to medium-sized businesses. Um, of course, the um, point of this is to encourage entrepreneurship. And then, um, so Maxima gave a speech talking about the importance of microfinance and the importance of entrepreneurship in the Netherlands um, and also... Um, the logistics of COVID-19 and small business loans, um, because COVID-19 is awful and really affects, um, smaller businesses kind of the most. So that was the day in the Netherlands. I know it was a lot. Um, and now we are going to move on to Norway. Today in Norway, there was an event. Um, I'm going to briefly talk about it here, and I am hoping to maybe talk more about it tomorrow after I have time to research. Um, This is one event where I didn't understand a lot of what was happening due to translation issues and also just, like, not a full comprehension of the event. So if time permits tomorrow, I may talk about it some more because this is just not going to give it the justice that I'm sure it deserves. Um, because it seemed like a really important event, but like the way I'm about to describe it makes it seem really unimportant because I couldn't figure out what was going on. Um, so today Crown Prince Akun and Crown Princess Metmarit, reminder, Akun is still serving as regent. Um, Today, they took part in an opening event for the, what I'm calling the Red Cross Easter Task Force, um, which seemingly appears to be this enormous effort of the Norwegian Red Cross to do, like, care packages for Easter, I think. Um, Easter is in... What, a week and a few days? Good Friday's in a week. So a week and three days. Um, and during that that week leading up to, um, some people call it, ho- uh, most people call it Holy Week. I think that's what Norway calls it too, but the translation said like Quiet Week or something. I don't know. There were a lot of translation issues today um, with the Norwegian royal family, so I don't quite know what's going on. Um, but they 
launched this event and then they kind of saw what like different um pieces and parts and programming is done for the event and so just like a lot of focus on what needs to be done to get these what I think are care packages out um to Norwegian people um it also included like medication and things along those lines so this is where I'm like really confused like is this go who is this going to um it's just something I need to do a lot more research on and just there's not enough time in the day for that um so that is unfortunately what I have going on in Norway today um like I said if time permits tomorrow which I think it will <laughs> Um, we will talk hopefully a little bit more about it. So with that, we are going to move on to our second foreign visit of the day with the Spanish royal family. Today in Spain, but technically not in Spain, uh, King Felipe and Queen Letizia took part in their first state visit since November of 2019. Um, today they started their visit to the Principality of Andorra. Uh, this trip was not a very long trip because Andorra is just north of Spain. Um, it's a very small country between Spain and France. France, um, off of Catalonia, which is, um, the north west of Spain. So they didn't have to go very far. Um, they took a plane to somewhere and then helicoptered over the mountains and landed in Andorra. I have no idea where the plane landed, but whatever. Um, it was a weird thing, but... Um, so they took part in a jam-packed day, um, and then tomorrow is another pretty big day, and then the state visit will be over. It's a pretty short thing. So they jam-packed in a whole state visit, which is typically three to four days, in two, which is impressive, and I'm thoroughly impressed now that it, the day one is over, because it was a lot. Um, but somehow they had, like, a few hour break in there. They did a lot first and then they had a dinner and then they did like they had a huge break before the dinner. Huge break. Um, okay. So first they started with an official welcome ceremony with the Bishop of Urgel, who is a co-prince of and Andorra, um, and a representative for Emmanuel Marcon, president of France, but also co-prince of Andorra. Um, things I have learned. So these two positions, um, if you're elected or appointed, um, elected in the French president's case and appointed in the bishop's case, um, you automatically become the co-prince of Andorra. Um, and I think you are referred to in that country alone as prince. Very cool. But I'm so kind of sad that Emmanuel Macron couldn't come. It makes me sad. I like him a lot. Um, but he's, anyway, okay. Um, so they took part in the official welcome ceremony. Next, they visited the Casa de Laval, uh, which is the parliament building or equivalent in Andorra. Um, all of this, by the way, is like surrounded by the Pyrenees Mountains and is beautiful. Um, do you know those, like, cheesy Hallmark Lifetime Now Netflix movies with, like, made-up countries um, that are principalities and, like, have really small communities and they're always so pretty and idyllic? This is what this looked like. Like, it's beautiful. Um, when I go to Spain, one of the first places that I want to go is Andorra because it looks gorgeous. Andorra is not in Spain. That is a mistake people make. It's not in Spain, but like beautiful. So, okay. Um, so next they visited the parish 
or town. They're called parishes in Andorra. Um, but they visited the parish Andorra La Vella, uh, where they met with government officials as well as employees from the Spanish embassy. Um, there are a lot of Spanish people who live in Andorra, um, which makes sense. Um, and Catalan is the primary language, although I couldn't tell. Catalan and Spanish are similar, but they're definitely not the same. Um, but I couldn't tell which language they were speaking most of the time. Like at one point I heard Leticia say muchas gracias, which is Spanish, but then I've heard Felipe say muchas gracias, which is Catalan. So I don't know. I think they can both speak. I know Felipe can speak Catalan. I'm pretty sure Letizia can as well. Um, but I don't know. I don't know which language they were using. Um, primarily. But then the schedule split and Queen Letizia started um, her individual part. Um, actually, this is the only thing she had. Um, taking part in a meeting about education in Andorra. Um, specifically focused on the country's inclusion of students with disabilities in their education format. So that was Letizia's solo event. Um, and then in the afternoon, King Felipe took part in a bilateral meeting with the head of the government of Andorra, who I think is called like a captain governor or something, um, but like actually in charge of the day to day. Uh, because the co-princes are, like, busy doing their day jobs, being the president of France and the bishop. Um, so, like, they're busy. Um, and so that happened. And then in the evening, there was a state dinner held by the government of Andorra. Um, this is normal. Um, of state visits, foreign visits, etc. You know, a couple of days ago, or yesterday... Uh, the Greek government held one for Charles and Camilla, um, and today, of course, in Andorra for King Felipe and Queen Letizia. Um, however, so here's what I was expecting of a state visit or a state dinner. Um, I definitely did not expect gala whatsoever. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Literally, I think there were like 30 people at this dinner, maybe 40. It was not a lot. Um... So I didn't expect gala by any means. I was kind of expecting cocktail. Um, and I guess that's what it was. However, it was like casual cocktail. Felipe was just in like a normal suit. I don't think he had like a more formal suit on at all. Letizia had on like dress pants. I mean, she looked great, believe me. But like... It was just very casual. I don't know. I'm going to make sure I am saying that Felipe was in super casual before I commit. Yeah, he was. He's in a blue pinstriped suit with a blue tie. Like, not even black. It's okay. Um, okay. I have problems with the outfits. I was very disappointed. Just very disappointed. Um, and so during this dinner, um, both the Bishop of Urgel and King Felipe gave speeches, um, talking about the importance of the relationship between Spain and Andorra, which has only been officially recognized since 1993 when Andorra was recognized by the UN. So tomorrow is another jam-packed, like, three quarters of a day, um, and so, like I said, we'll do a separate uh, episode tomorrow outside of normal scheduling to talk about the final day of the state visit and any events that happen tomorrow. Um, and then I still will put out an episode on Monday that covers any weekend events plus probably half of the monarchies that I don't talk about. Um, just like a very general like here's what they are. There are about 30 monarchies. I talk about seven. So just for reference, that means I don't talk about 23. So I'm doing a little bit of research, not a lot, um, and I've made it through like five of them. But I'll have more time over the weekend to get those ready. Um, so that's what Monday's episode will be. Anything that may happen over the weekend and then um, a breakdown of the royal families that I don't talk about 
and just a very general thing, but there will be a little bit more information on the website come Monday morning. So that is what was going on in Spain. And now we are going to move on to Sweden. <laughs> And we are finishing this episode with the Swedish royal family, who is done for the week. They had just a couple of events today and no extended explanation of the events. So, in some miracle, we're going to get this in under 40 minutes. Wow, that was awesome. Um, so, we're just going to quickly go through what the events were. Um, so, first, King Carl Gustav, as, as well as Prince Carl Philip, who I don't typically talk about on this podcast, but he was on the event too. Um, took part in the Academy of Forestry and Agriculture's workshop called Economic Consequences of Damage to the Forest. That just sounds like puppies and unicorns, doesn't it? Um, anyway, so that is what they were doing. But again, nothing. I expect maybe some more information tomorrow. Um, and then Queen Sylvia took part in a digital meeting with Mentor, which I'm assuming is an organization but they didn't even say that. So that's what was going on in Sweden today, um, as well as all of these other royal families. I hope you enjoyed this um, incredibly intense episode. I loved today. Um, however, one thing I noticed is that I was so busy watching the day that I forgot to kind of get ready to report on it. So it, everything's been a little bit more rushed than I would like today, but that's okay. Um, and also just like adjusting to a new normal. So anyway, with that, um, please make sure to check out the dailyroyal.com. I will have photos and videos linked of all of the amazing stuff that happened today. Um, the Daily Royal on Instagram will have a ton of photos as well. Um, and it does have, I made this new thing that's like a highlight reel for the foreign visits of 2021. So far, um, there are photos from Charles and Camilla's trip to Greece. And then tomorrow I'll update with the Andorra visit. Um, so check that out. Um, I'm doing lots of new things on there. I'm loving Instagram at the moment. So check that out. And we um, like and review this podcast wherever you're listening to it. And I will talk to you all um, tomorrow for our special Saturday episode. Until then, enjoy the rest of your Friday. Bye.